Greetings friends, David Marks here. In this tutorial, I'm going to dig into the advanced camera modes that are now available inside of the Lightroom for Mobile app on Android and iOS devices. Two quick reminders. First, to get the most out of the Lightroom for Mobile app, you will need an Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. And second, some of the features that I'm going to highlight today are device dependent. If you're using an older generation mobile device, then you may not be able to find everything that I'm going to talk about in this video. But most of this amazing stuff should be there for you on any recent smartphone or tablet. Let me switch over to my iPad so that I can show you some incredible advances in our mobile image capture technology. In my last Lightroom for Mobile tutorial, I dug into some of the camera controls that are available now inside of the app's integrated camera feature. There's a lot of cool stuff in here, but I covered all the basics last time. So today, I'm going to tap here on the word auto to switch from automatic mode over to the new professional capture mode. When you are in automatic mode, the app controls the shutter speed, the ISO, and the white balance for you. Switching over to professional mode, however, gives you complete control over all of these settings. I'll cover all of these new controls that just appeared at the bottom of the screen in just a second. But first, let me remind you that up here at the very top, are controls for the flash and the file type. I'm going to click here on this lightning bolt symbol and set the flash to off rather than leaving it in its default automatic setting. Next, I'm going to tap here where it says JPEG and set the file format for our images to DNG. If your device supports this option, and not all mobile devices do, then I urge you to set this one this way. DNG RAW files are a much more flexible starting point for all of our digital captures. I'm not going to tap on this little camera looking button here for this demo, but remember that this one switches from rear to front facing camera on your mobile device. Right below that button though are the three little dot symbol. Tapping here brings up a really useful set of buttons and features. I covered all these buttons in our last tutorial, and I'll come back to one of these again when we get to the HDR capture part. But for now, I'm just going to tap on the stopwatch button to activate the two second self timer. And then I'm going to tap on the little triangle looking symbol to activate the live highlights clipping indicator. I find this option, which will show us a zebra stripe pattern over the areas that will be blown out, to be invaluable when I'm shooting this professional camera mode. So now let's take a closer look at the advanced camera controls that we have at the bottom of the screen. On the far left is our exposure compensation control. We saw this one in the last tutorial on the camera app basics. If I tap here, then a slider will appear. Using this slider, I can force the app to capture a brighter or darker exposure than it thinks it should. Just for demo, I'm going to slide this one way up to the right to set a much brighter exposure. As I slide this one up, do you see how that zebra stripe pattern begins to appear? That's the live overexposure warning that I just activated. I'm not going to shoot anything at this setting, but I just want to show you that if you've set some value in here and you want to undo that setting, then all you have to do is double tap on the EXP button. That double tap trick, this quick reset option, is not limited to this type of control either. You can use this trick with any of these camera controls to quickly reset one function without changing all the others. Sure, an exposure compensation control is a nice touch, but it's the buttons further to the right that give us real precision. Working our way from the left to the right across this line, we have separate controls for the camera's shutter speed, the ISO, the white balance, and a manual focus control. By carefully adjusting these controls, in a stable studio lighting environment, I can capture cleaner images with this device. The sensors on our mobile devices, like this iPad, are getting better and better, but they tend to get noisy as the ISO increases. Whenever possible, I like to set my iPad's camera to its cleanest ISO setting, which in this case is 25. Dialing in 25 here will give me the cleanest image possible, but it's also the least light sensitive setting. So now I need to tap on the SEC button, which is our shutter speed control, and slide this one up to the right. 
I'm going to slide this one up until that zebra stripe pattern appears. And then I'm going to back off a little. My goal when I'm shooting anything with any type of digital camera is to get as bright an exposure as possible, especially when I'm capturing DNG RAW files. Exposing for the brightest highlights is a great theory, but I also need to be careful not to blow anything out, which is why the live highlight clipping indicator, those zebra stripes, are so helpful. Next, I'm going to adjust the white balance using this control here. Since I'm shooting RAW files, getting the white balance right at the time of capture is not critical. But in this case, setting a custom white balance is easy and it will save me from having to color correct these images later. To set a custom white balance, I'm going to tap on this little eyedropper symbol right here. Now, Lightroom wants me to fill up the center rectangle with a neutral object. Well, I happen to have a white balance card right here. So I'm going to hold that in front of the camera and then I'll click on the trigger button to set this for our custom white balance. It may be hard to see in the video recording, but trust me, the colors that I'm seeing on my iPad screen now are way more accurate. Right now, this feature is not available on Android devices, but I'm sure that it's coming soon. Finally, I could tap here if I wanted on the little brackets with a plus symbol for manual focus controls. Now, most of the time, just tapping with one finger to set your focal point is a great way to do things. But there are times when I want more precision from one photo to the next, especially if things are moving around in front of the camera. In that case, going to manual focus here allows you to maintain a consistent focal distance frame after frame. Now that I have everything dialed in, I'm going to tap the big round trigger button at the bottom and let's see what we get. Just to be careful, I'm going to change the shutter speed one more time and go just a little bit brighter. Okay, for a quick review of the image that we just captured, I can tap here in the bottom left. To really see what we created though, I need to tap on the X up here at the top left corner to close out of the camera function and return to the Lightroom for Mobile app home screen. Next, I can tap here on this thumbnail beside the words Lightroom Photos, and then here on our most recent image. This tap brings me into the editing mode. Now, I could tap one more time to go to full screen, and then I could use the two finger pinch push move to zoom in further if I wanted to see even more detail. I'll double tap to set this back to fit on screen. One more tap to bring out the interface. If I wanted to, I could rotate this one or crop it or develop it using these controls in here. But all of this stuff is the subject for another tutorial. Instead, let's go back to the camera and talk about that HDR capture mode. To get back to the camera app, I'm going to tap on this arrow in the upper left corner twice to return to the home screen. Then I'm going to tap the little camera button down here to return to capture mode. First, I'm going to tap on this to reset all of the controls for our manual camera. And then I'm going to tap where it says mode and switch over to the new HDR, high dynamic range, capture mode. Now, I know what you see in front of you is not some wonderful photo, but I'll show you some better examples in just a minute. As you can see, we have many of the same icons and buttons at the top and the bottom of the screen here. If I wanted to, I could adjust the focus or the white balance, but for this demo, I'm just going to change one setting. I'm going to tap up here on the three little dots option menu again. Then I'm going to tap on the gear symbol. In here, I'm going to activate the save unprocessed original option to better illustrate what happens when you shoot images in this capture mode. When you shoot an image in the Lightroom for Mobile HDR capture mode, the app actually fires off three quick pictures. As soon as it can, Lightroom for Mobile takes these three images and then it blends them together. Now, it takes a little while, but ultimately the results, the HDR composite, becomes your second frame. I know this is a lousy photo, and I promise that I will show you better ones in just a minute. But first, let me show you what I mean about these two frames. The one with the DNG badge is the darker frame, 
and the one with the HDR badge is the combo that was merged and processed if I had not enabled the save unprocessed original option a minute ago, then the first frame, the darker one, would not have been saved here as a separate file. What's so cool is that this image, the HDR composite, was built using the exact same type of image processing code that we have under the merge to HDR feature inside Lightroom CC. If I tap on this photo, the merge, to enter the editing mode, and then tap on the light drill down, you can see the settings that Adobe's Autotone algorithm chose for our composite. If I wanted to change any of these settings, either here or on my desktop computer, I certainly could. If I wanted to, I could tap on the word reset at the bottom and then choose the reset all option to undo everything that it did for me. I'm gonna do this just to demonstrate how much dynamic range this HDR file contains. Watch as I slide the exposure slider to the left here, how much detail we have in the brightest area, those trees and the sky outside of my window. Watch when I slide this slider the other way, how much detail we also have inside of the room. I'm gonna tap on auto again. Do you see how this two frame blend is creating an image with a much larger tonal range that my iPad could otherwise ever capture in a single shutter click. Let me switch back over to my computer, and then I'll show you some examples of how useful this HDR mode can be. Okay, so now a little slideshow of images that I've captured over the past few months using this HDR feature. I hope that these images will demonstrate where this amazing feature works well and where it fails. First up, I think that the HDR mode works really well for high contrast cityscape shots like this one, as long as there's nothing moving in your scene. If I zoom in here, look at that highlight detail on the left and right side of the water tower. Now, check out the detail down here in the shadows under these flowers. There is no way that I could have ever captured this kind of dynamic range in a single shutter click. Same thing here. You can see a hint of color and detail up here in the sky. Those would be our brightest highlights. Then, if we look here under the water tower, you can see beams and details that would ordinarily be a pure black shadow. Closer to home, I think that this new HDR feature works great with sleeping animals. No, seriously, this feature works really well on architectural interior shots where there is a lot of contrast between the light inside and the light outside. Likewise, this new HDR feature works really well in heavily backlit scenes like these Montana hay bales or in this misty, rainy scene in the Smokies. But here's where this new feature begins to fall apart, at least with my current equipment. When you're shooting at night or in very low lit situations, there is such a huge difference between the ISO setting in one frame and another that the composite shows tons of noise in the darkest regions. Likewise, the masking deghosting algorithm has a really hard time with fast moving subjects like my nephews. And here, things completely fall apart in scenes like this one where the wheat field is blowing in the wind. There's no way that the deghosting algorithm can deal with this much motion. Well, there you go. Before I sign off, let me say for those who geek out on this kind of technical stuff that all of these HDR composites are the same kind of floating point high bit raw file that we've been making for a few years now using Lightroom's powerful merge to HDR command. These high bit images have the full flexibility of a traditional raw file plus the expanded dynamic range of a multi frame HDR blend. In plain English, this geek stuff simply means that these images and this kind of capture precision or something we've never seen before on a mobile device. I hope that you found this video useful, and I'll see you in our next tutorial.